Polonius the Pit Pony is set in the 1960s, so to the, towards the end of the 1960s. It was my experience to see all of these pit ponies that were on their little break from the pit, uh, probably be about nine or ten years old at the time. And it was quite fascinating to see these maybe 50, 100 horses um, all in this field. And we didn't really know where they'd come from, but then we found out that they'd come from the pit and they were very, very um, docile. But it was, it was a thing that we'll never see again um, because we obviously don't use pit ponies. I would say life has changed for travelling people in a lot of ways. Obviously technology changes everybody's lives. Um, back when I was younger there were a lot more stopping places, so there were places where my family had stayed for hundreds of years. Um, a lot of those disappeared in the 1960s because we had big schools being built, uh, roads widening, all of those things. So I think. Um, the biggest change, I think, is, is the, the lack of stopping places and, the, and then technology um, has advanced as well so people can travel even further. So that the traditional circular route that maybe my family would take from Newcastle in the winter all the way through County Durham and down into Yorkshire then back up into Cumbria and then back again, that, that's changed completely. When, when did I decide that I wanted to be an author? I'm not sure that I ever decided that I wanted to be an author. I can remember being at school and, and loving books. So I was just totally in love with books and I would read any kind of book. And, and in those days I would go to the library or to jumble sales. There wasn't such things as car boot sales, but there were jumble sales and you could buy these books. And I, I just loved books. And then when my children that are grown up now, when they were younger, I would read them bedtime stories. And when I was reading the bedtime stories, I could see the, the massive positive impact it had on them. Um, so I became a professional storyteller and then a publisher asked me would, would I be interested in publishing some of those stories with them and that's how it came about. So um, I, I've always admired authors and I guess maybe in the back of my mind I always wanted to turn my stories into books but I didn't set out to be an author. Oh, just do it. Just write, and write about the things that you know first. So for example, wherever you come from, whatever your family structure is, wherever you live, whether you live in a mansion or a cottage or whatever it is, or a caravan, then write about that because other people will find your life fascinating. Because again, I think sometimes people think it always has to be about, you know, what, what we perceive to be amazing things, but actually ordinary life. Try making, try writing that and try making that interesting. And I, and I think we'll find that other people will find that interesting. Yeah, um, this is my new book, uh, The Can Caravan. And again, the story behind this is I was going down the motorway in my car and there was a truck I was overtaking. And it had this huge aluminium ingot, which is like, it looks like a giant piece of, um, I guess a Kit Kat or a chocolate bar or something. And it was, it was made from one and a half million cans. And it got me thinking about caravans, and it got me thinking about cans. And that was the idea um, that got me into writing this story about a girl called Janie who wants to create a caravan for a neighbour of hers. They live on the same caravan site. And this older lady, then her caravan is, is, a, is a bit old and a bit creaky and not working very well. Um, but she's very, very proud and she doesn't want anybody to just give her the money for a new caravan. But Janie has her plan and it's up to her to see whether through recycling she can actually get a new caravan for her neighbour. Um, and I think we probably know that she might, judging by the front cover. Um, but it's, it's, a real, um, it's real good fun to, to do these books because then you get to do the things that you like. Because I love recycling and my family have always been recyclers. Um, and I just think it's great. I think it would be really, really good to have a caravan that looked like it can. What do you think? One of my earliest memories about living in County Durham was coal dust. Uh, there were so many coal mines at the time and these big trucks would take the coal from place to place 
and on a, on a warm, dry day particularly, there'd be lots and lots of coal dust everywhere. And when it was windy, it used to blow around. And the smell um, of coal fires, especially in the winter, because everybody pretty much would have a coal fire. And they loved that. And I've always loved the accent. I kind of lost mine a bit, uh, or a lot probably. But I've always loved the County Durham accent. It's such an expressive um, way of speaking. And that's what I've always loved. And again, the other thing I think I would say I love about County Durham growing up was the stories. People were just wonderful storytellers and, and people, you know, pit people, travelling people, all the different people were just great storytellers. So that, that's what I loved um, about it the most. And, and, and just people being really warm and friendly um, and fun as kids, just playing out and having fun. Um, so, so many good things about County Durham.